Hey, what's going on everybody? It's David Palmer, the Leo King, and can you believe it? It's 2018. Now, I know I'm like almost two weeks late. I know, it seems like this year's already flying by, but every year I do a 2018 forecast, or what I like to call my year of the end address, which because I've been moving studios and because I've been moving so much in the last literal couple weeks, it's been very hard for me to sit down and do the video. And every year I usually go to a park and I sit down and I literally ponder what's coming up for the next year ahead and then I like to look back and go, oh, you know what, this is exactly what the last year was about and where it's bringing us. So this show is a little bit of a hybrid because I always like to start off with like where we came from, the big things that ended, and then I always like to go into, oh, where are we going and what is coming up? Now, it's interesting whenever you read on people's Facebooks or when you look on people's Instagrams and stuff, especially near the end of the year, people go, oh, that was the best year of my life. And then they put their top nine pictures and they're like, oh yeah, this is so awesome. Or you don't see people put up those top nine. And then it's like, no, this year was horrible. It's like one of the worst years of my life. And I'm always like, huh. And it'll be funny because like, for me, I would say 2015 was one of the hardest years of my life. And I remember at the end of 2015, seeing people saying, that was the best year of my life. And I would look back and go, what the heck are you talking about? So it's kind of interesting to see how, sure, as a collective, right, which I like to talk about, especially illuminating the collective consciousness, we all as people, right, where it's like, we all go through our own unique worlds. We all go through a year differently than everyone else. I think that that's a big part of it all. But I think that a bigger part of it all is realizing that there is a collective energy still. Even though, yes, there are years where let's say your best friend's gonna have a hard year and other years where that best friend might have a better year. But at the end of the day, we all are going through a common energy that we have to take a step back, especially with our consciousness and try and understand. Because once we are able to do that, once we check out that consciousness, we can fly so much higher in the universe. So 2017 coming into 2018, because when I really think about 2017 astrologically, there's a couple things that really come to note that I would like to highlight. One, Saturn square Neptune. Now, uh, you know, a lot of people um, might have forgotten about it, but we had a very tense aspect between Saturn and Neptune. And Saturn is reality and the concrete and the physical reality and Neptune is the fog, the illusion, uh, the invisible. And it also deals with the media. And so what we did was we had this massive, at the beginning of the year, and especially at the end of the election and the beginning of a new president, we had this massive bash between corporate, government, and physical entities against this media, spiritual world. It almost kind of felt like they went into war together. And so that transit, was actually at the end of 2016 and finished at the beginning, you know, mid of 2017. And so you'd think uh, that it would just like kind of go away, but what it really did was peak out at that time. And usually what you see with transits is it's kind of like a, um, I don't know, I guess you could say like, a, <laughs> I was gonna use the analogy of a fart. Like whenever you fart, right, there's the moment of the fart, but man, that thing could be smelly for a couple minutes afterwards, you know what I mean? And kind of linger around. And I think we've been seeing a little bit of that lingering around with the media and corporations and um, the, the bash between corporate and media or the bash between government and media or the bash between like this kind of like lost in space feeling that we all went through at the beginning of 2017. So the good news coming into 2018 is that lost in space feeling Sure, there's going to be a little bit of it because of the fact that Neptune is actually in Pisces, but it's not going to be, I think, as hard as it was near that time frame. So I think that one of the best things that I can look back on and move into this year with is, at the end of the day, if I were to really be honest with you all, I think that this is an awesome year for the sheer fact that it won't feel like you're so lost. This is definitely a year now that Saturn has arrived back in its home sign of Capricorn, and definitely a year when you actually think about what's going on with uh, Neptune being in an awesome aspect to Saturn, not in a negative one. This means that you know it's gonna feel a lot more like we can move into things, we can make things happen without 
so much of the, I would say, really hard sensitivities or really hard delusions or even kind of feeling like, um, you know, one thing about Neptune is it can deal with secret enemies, right? It could feel like there's people like out to get you or, or, or against you in some sort of way. And I think that this is a year where you're going to find that more people are wanting to work together. And, and when you get a time where people want to work together, you know, and you get people that are coming together to work together, much better things happen through the year. Another big hard aspect, I'll be honest for you, for 2017 was Saturn Square Chiron. Saturn Square Chiron was horrendously hell. It was literally the spiritual wound inside all of us of where we feel we have to fix. So the best way I could describe it is we all had this huge wound deep inside of ourselves or even outside of ourselves. It's like having a huge wart that turned into scabies that turned into I don't know and then it's like pouring salt on the wound. Like there's a lot of the difficult aspects of us feeling like we've been shorted or we haven't gotten what we really wanted in our life. One thing about Saturn is it's about accomplishment, it's about achievement. But when it makes a hard square to Chiron, it's like, gosh, I've been working my butt off and, I'm, and I see the vision, but why is it like no matter what I'm doing, I'm not getting where I really, really want to go fully. There's always like something missing or it's not good enough. A good example is I've always used the, the definition of a deformed baby, which I know a lot of people give me hell for, and I'm going to continue to say that freaking analogy until the end of time. But you know, it's like deformed babies can be a beautiful thing. I mean, sure, everybody wants to have a perfect baby when they, when they have a baby, right? Like, if it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. There's always a reason for things in life. You know, and it's like the Quasimodo thing, right? The Hunchback of Notre Dame element where it's like, oh God, it's like, I don't want to know this person or that person's all weird or funky. I think that this is realizing, you know what, we've all had to face that deep within ourselves. I think we've had to face that in ways that, um, you know, have really, I think, kind of helped us come into 2018 and realize, you know what? Whatever issues are in my life that haven't been working out exactly the way they want to, or my achievements haven't reached that spot, this is a year where, yes, Saturn is going to continue to square Chiron at the beginning, but it also is coming to its, its, its full end, you know? Um, and and what, what I think is so great about that is um, they're happening in different areas. Saturn's not, no longer in Sagittarius. Chiron this year is moving into Aries, which is a much different element and different sign. So I think that a lot of the wounds and the identities of things that are unseen or extremely sensitive or just feel like they're not part of our you know, physical reality is coming to fruition. Uh, another big thing you know, that if I look back at 2017, was these eclipses. I mean, yeah, the great American eclipse. Everybody was all obsessed with it. Like, literally, it's like so fun to see as an astrologer, people actually like going, wow, could this eclipse really mean something in the world? Like, people actually spent money and time and sold out hotels to go see this great eclipse. It's like, welcome to the club, everybody, because we've been doing this stuff for years. And yes, it has made a significant impact. I mean, not only in the weather patterns in America this year with the different crazy events we saw, not only with fires, but floods and hurricanes, but you know, and especially two of the biggest hurricanes back to back right after that um, eclipse period that triggered. But what it also brought up was the Leo energy, right? This was a solar eclipse in Leo. It was trining the planet Uranus exactly to the degree, which means that this has been a great year, 2017, that we left of all of us wanting to leave the crap in our life and to ascend to a new place. It was like we were tired, we were bored of the same old. And so I think it's funny when we look up at the political culture today or we look at where we're at just in society or where we're at in the media or where we're at in the world, we all got bored of all that. Trust me, you, you know, sometimes we, we get a little lost in thinking like, oh, no, 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 I, I kind of want it to go back the other way. No, 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 Collectively, we've all wanted to move into a much more crazier, wild, unpredictable identification of a new life that's happier, that's more fun. And sure, it might be more dramatic. It is a solar eclipse in Leo. I think 2017, the last six months ended with more drama than it did at the beginning. But I definitely feel that... Um, 
you know, coming into 2018, it's about remembering that the universe is opening, uh, offering us a huge, huge year to go into crazy radical directions, to meet with different groups, to connect with new people, but more important than that, to truly raise the vibration. Uranus is all about vibration. It's all about frequencies, and these are extreme new frequencies coming in the planet. Now, for some people, it might be extremely uncomfortable. For some people, it might be like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, you know, in life. But, you know, I think a lot of this is realizing if you're willing to say fuck it a little bit more, go into some place that you never tried before, and especially in Aries, not be afraid to do something new, to try something innovative, to try something that you've never tried before. I guarantee you, you are going to fly. 2018 is honestly one of the greatest years for flying ever, just from the sheer fact of that eclipse that signaled us into the year. And a lot of what we see in 2018, even though yes, it's not as, uh, I would say, such a big fiery energy that we saw in 2017 that kind of gives us that burst. It's the grounding and the foundation of 2018 that makes that flying possible with the building of the wings to make the plane, if that makes sense. Some last highlights for 2017 is the nodes changing. We, we left the Pisces Virgo energy, which I think was a lot of why there was so much delusion and crazy and unknown and kind of felt like we went through a washing machine in an unknown crazy world. The, the, the nodes when they changed into Leo Aquarius, I, I really, halfway through the year, what it did was it, it opened up a whole entire new foundation for us to really find what in our world is good for us, what in our life is good for us, what people, what organizations are working and which ones are not in alignment with us anymore. But more importantly, it's about seeking the true understanding that we must know how to love ourselves first, we must know how to bring positivity into people's lives first before we can truly 100% start to help the world. We have to be able to help ourselves. We have to be able to be happy in ourselves to make everybody else happy. And I think that uh, it's also been a time where we're realizing the trends, what we think is cool, worrying about what other people think, worried about what other people say. The more you follow that road, you're not going to get what you want in life, and it's not going to go the direction you want. I think that there's uh, the lesson of this transit, which continues throughout pretty much 95% of 2018, because the node switch at the end of 2018 into Cancer and Capricorn. But this, for 2018, is reminding you that when you come into 2018 and throughout the whole year, to remind yourself 100%, okay, if you're worried about what other people think, if you're trying to do it the way that everybody else is doing it, you are not going to vibrate higher. This is about your own creative, loving, and vibration, and happy juice, however you want to say it, about the way that you want to do things, and how important and how awesome life can be when you know how to find it in your own way. And not wearing the glasses that you see because everybody else is wearing them, but maybe going to the sunglass section and picking out the ones that you think are best for you. Last thing, 2017 ended with a really big, crazy transit. We had a lot at the galactic center point. Saturn at the galactic center point. Mercury retrograde at the galactic center point. Conjunct Saturn, too. Uh, the Sun and Saturn uh, collecting at that spot. And now, as we're speaking today, Mercury and Saturn starting their conjunction in Capricorn, but after uh, the galactic center point. And what does this mean? Well, on a long term, the way that we ended 2017 was fate stepped in at its highest calling. So you might look back 20 years from now or even 30 years from now, and you might freak yourself out and realize that it really was the end of November into all of December that really was one of the most faded things in the universe for karma, you know, projects, things coming together that feel like they've almost been, in a cliche way of saying it, the stars truly aligning. And literally they did. They did in the biggest of ways. A lot of people uh, put a lot of clickbait out there recently about Jupiter and Mars and, and, and trying to redo the Age of Aquarius song. You know, there's a little bit of that. Okay, it's very rare, Jupiter, Mars, sure, every, you know, Every, you know, year to year and a half, you know, Jupiter and Mars, they come together. 
I mean, but it's, so it's not like or, or every two years they come together. It's not like the end of the world. Um, but I think that what it's interesting is it, it, it's more of this galactic center point and the alignments that happened there that blew our minds. That November into December of 2017, the way we ended it was fate, was people, was projects, was situations that finally came together that maybe you didn't believe could come together that are now having to express. It's kind of like having a little galactic center love child, like bah, with all of your karma, like bah, coming out of the year. And so I think 2018 is about raising this crazy galactic love child of all these things and having to take care of it. And what is Saturn and Capricorn, where it's going to be for the next two and a half years? Growing up, being a parent, owning your shit, taking care of business with that galactic love child. So I'm going to sit down for a second. And uh, by the way, we are live. So of course, I'm in the chat room on my iPhone actually right now. Uh, check in with people. And what's cool is uh, today we are going to be able to take a look at some charts do some drawings and be able to uh, see what's going on there. So thanks so much for all being here today. And uh, if everybody could share this video, it'd be awesome. We are going to put this out on YouTube, but uh, just thanks for being here. Um, and I just wanted to tell you that literally and text-wise. So 2018, that's what everybody's here for. Everybody wants to know, 2018. Let me say this. One, we have five eclipses this year. Okay, five. Not that that's crazy. I've seen five eclipses before. But a lot of these eclipses, a lot of them, okay, four out of the five are still happening in Leo and Aquarius. So you really need to embrace Leo and Aquarius. You're also going to see a lot of Leo and Aquarius people making moves in their lives, even combinations of Leos and Aquariuses. They're going to be around. But, and especially anybody with Leo and Aquarius stuff. But what's the big deal about Leo and Aquarius, which I just ended the whole 2017 highlight with, but in 2018, I mean, if you really think about Leo and Aquarius, it's about shining your brightest. These are the two energies that are about shining your brightest just in very different ways. But they're also about extreme creativity of self. And there's a little bit of stubbornness in both signs. You'd think that Aquarius is flexible in a water sign, but it's not. It's an air sign, and it's all about doing things differently, innovatively, and creatively, and finding, you know, the coolest and most unique way of doing it. And if it's bland, boring, and been done before, it doesn't want to do it. Same thing with Leo. Just Leo just would rather dramatize it all and make it a big play or some creative thing or just speak really loud or just say that they're the best. But still, it's a lot about doing something that's coming from the heart, coming from the life source. Both these energy sources are from the life source. So you need to remember that in 2018, if you're worried about what other people think, if you're worried about, well, I think I, I, that's the best way to put it on a very simple level, but if you don't know how to like listen to what's in here, what you know is right for your heart, what's gonna make you feel the best, what's gonna make you feel happy, and you know what, Leo is all about courage. If you don't have the courage to do it your way and try it your way, and you're the kind of person who would rather, you know, look up on the internet how to do it and see how everybody else did it instead of trying it yourself or trying it in your own way, it might be a tough year for you because I think uh, you're going to realize that in 2018, your courage is going to be tested more than it ever has in your life. Because when you combine that with Saturn and Capricorn, when you combine that with Neptune and Pisces and sextile, when you combine that in a year where Mars retrogrades in its sign of exaltation in Capricorn, this is a year where courage is at its highest, highest test. And when I mean courage, I mean literally the ability to move into something without fear. And you know what? Without, with fear comes courage. So yes, there is going to be a lot of fear. But the fear is in yourself and crossing your own bridge to doing the things that you really want to do, accomplish in your life. It takes 28 and a half to 30 years 28 and a half to 30 years for Saturn to come around the sun, right? Okay. Now that it's in Capricorn and it's home sign, this is the time where you literally shouldn't waste that energy. And what I want to do really quick is I want to draw a little bit of a picture here because 
it's extremely rare in how we're starting to see things. So uh, the best way to describe it is we have, if we look at a chart, we have Saturn here in Capricorn, okay? We have Neptune in Pisces here, okay? And the, the way I always uh, do Neptune is I know it looks like an antenna, okay? And then we have this north node in Leo and this south node in Aquarius, okay? And let's do 2018 right here, okay? So 2018. These two are going to be showing themselves. It's not showing up? There we go. Got it now? Sorry about that. Getting this thing ready. So anyway, here we got Leo. Here we got Aquarius. But what's powerful is this Saturn-Neptune. So you got to remember that Saturn and Neptune did not get along in 2017, but in 2018 they are getting along. And courage is so big because it's a year in which Mars is going to retrograde in its natural zone. And remember that Pluto is in Capricorn. Remember that now Mars is going to be in Capricorn. There's a lot of Capricorn. Like, let's, let's just take a look here, okay? So let's go to when this Mars retrogrades happen, which is June 6, 26, I think it is. Yeah, June 26. We're almost there. All right. So look at this, okay? You've already got Saturn. You've got Pluto and Capricorn. And see how Neptune is 16 degrees over here? Here, well, let's do this. Let's make this easy on everybody. All right. Okay, all right. Hold on. Uh, really? No. <laughs> uh. I want to show you guys all this. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. So, see how we've got Saturn, and, and this is halfway through the year, folks. Remember, this is June 26. I like showing people halfway through the year so they realize. We're gonna have a lot of this Capricorn energy still going on, Saturn and Pluto, which is something I'm gonna talk about a little later in the program here. But Mars is going to retrograde and come backwards and come back into Capricorn, the sign in which it's at exaltation, okay? Exalted. And what does that mean? That means Saturn triumphs. He's on his high horse. He makes big moves, big things. But it's at a time that which the North Node is still in Leo. It's at a time in which, if you actually think about it, when Mars goes retrograde, it's going to be happening during a time in which we really have to see that courage is at its greatest strength because of the fact that Chiron is in its year of finally coming into Aries. Chiron hasn't been in Aries for almost 50 years, okay? So a lot of people, if you're under 50 years old, have never seen Chiron in Aries, right? Like Chiron in Aries uh, is kind of odd, you know? Chiron in Aries lasts a long time. So it technically hasn't been 50 years, but since the beginning of its sign is 50 years. Chiron likes to stay in Aries, the, one of the longest out of all the different signs. But what I'm trying to say is that courage, ego, and your strength are going to be at your greatest test throughout the year. And when I really think about this, and I look at all the other transits, this is what, a, a, what this year is coming down to, is are you going to be able to grow into your courage? Are you going to be able to grow into yourself? 
This is a year where not only Mars retrogrades, this is also a year where Venus retrogrades. That's a very rare aspect to happen. And this is a year where your self-worth with Uranus entering Taurus is coming at its greatest needing to change. So when you mix in the bag Uranus coming into Taurus, when you mix into the bag North Node in Leo, Mars retrograde in its exaltation, when you mix into the bag Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn dealing with needing to be an adult and grow into things. 2018 is not for the weak, I'm gonna be honest with you. And with the South Node in Aquarius, I have said this a thousand times. I said it like last year, I don't know, maybe a thousand, but I probably said it more like 20 or 30. But charities, um, organizations and groups are going to not be there to really help like they usually are. And it's just because the South Node is finishing and ending things in Aquarius, which rules charities, which rules organizations. The helping hand of what you think would normally be there won't. It's a year where it teaches you to grow into your own courage, your own strength. And this is the year, 2018, literally. This is the year where the Pluto-Uranus square doesn't end officially, but it actually ends enough to where they're in different signs. This has been going on since 2000 and actually we could take it all the way back to 2010 when Pluto entered uh, in Capricorn in 2008 and Uranus entered Aries in 2010. This will be the first time in eight years, eight years, okay, that we won't have Pluto square Uranus in cardinal signs. Eight years. So what does that mean? All of the issues with having to push forward and, you know, get bite your teeth and keep and keep going and keep achieving. It's moving now to a self-worth issue. Like if you don't really believe that you're the best at what you can do and you don't have the strength to do it, it will literally show you why you don't. So it's a scary year if you don't believe in your own shit that you put out there. <laughs> it's a very bad year for people who have very low self-esteems and hope that other people can pick them up because there will not be that many people to pick them up. This is also a year, and, and, and I do want to say this in standing up and dropping iPhones, I do want to say this. When I look at this year, and one of the main things that I have to say about this year is this. 2018 is a year about returning home. Now what does that mean? Well, let's just cover it all. We've got Saturn in its home sign of Capricorn. We've got Venus, which is going to retrograde in Libra, its home sign. We've got Jupiter coming into Sagittarius at the end of the year in November and December of 2018. That's its home sign. We have Mars retrograding in its exaltation, which is the second home. It's kind of like, you got to remember that like in astrology, each planet has a house, right? Okay, like the sun, it's Leo. The moon, it's Cancer. Well, imagine having a vacation house. That's your exalted house, right? So Mars exaltation is Capricorn. It's vacation house. So Mars is kind of coming home, but not really, okay? But when you get all this energy coming home, and then Neptune is in Pisces. Now, I don't want to get too kind of uh, too deep religiously or anything like that, but some of the biggest spiritual things always happen when all the planets return home. They always like to say in Christianity, the second coming of Christ or returning home. It's usually moments that, I don't want to say literally of Jesus coming home, but moments that could feel like that in years where a lot of things come home. Now in 2017, we felt at the end of the year the farthest away from home because we had a lot of planets in detriment. We had Mercury retrograde in detriment all through no the end of November, December, and into January. We had Mars in detriment for 40 days. We also had Venus in detriment in Scorpio at the same time. That they were all happening at the same time. And at the same token, you know, Saturn does not like to be in Sagittarius. Jupiter doesn't like to be in Scorpio. 
there's a lot of planets that are, uh, weren't happy at the end of 2017. 2018, well, we start off with some planets at home and we end with planets at home. So at the end of the day, the good news is vibration-wise, yeah, it's forcing you to find your center, find your greatness, and find your at home in yourself and find what you can do great with it. But at the end of the day, if, if you're not ready to do that work, if you're not ready to build that foundation, if you're not ready to own it, it's gonna be a very tough year for you. Especially where we're gonna start to see the node shift at the end of the year into Capricorn and Cancer. And this is gonna be hard. I think it's gonna be, I, I'll be honest with you all, I think 2019 is way harder than 2018. It's also the year of the pig in Chinese in 2019. 2018, remember, is the year of the dog. So at least dogs find a way to be happy even if they get hit, run over, kicked over, the trash falls on them. Somehow the dog knows how to laugh it off and have a good day at the end of the day. So I'm not really worried about 2018. What really gets me is how 2018 and the foundation that you must build this year is going to affect us in 2019 because 2019 is looking like the I don't want I'm just gonna say it, it looks like the chaotic year okay just gonna be real so how far you take 2018 matters because where you're gonna be in 2019 think of it as like the Titanic sinking okay where is your lifeboat what deck on Titanic are you on that's all based on what ticket that you get at the end of 2018. So when we load the Titanic in 2019, I hate to use analogies that are just truer than true, but the best analogy that I can give you for 2018 is you better work your ass off to get the ticket to get that better seat on Titanic. Because if you don't work on that this year, if you were gonna throw away this year to being lazy, not putting in the work, just trying to chill out. Guess what? I know it can be fun down at the bottom decks and listening to Irish music and dancing around, but when it sinks, it's not too fun having all that water at the bottom down there. And that's the problem, is we are having a north node come into Cancer. We are also gonna have this year on July 12th a big solar eclipse. It's not total, but a partial solar eclipse happened in Cancer. And it's all going to be opposing Saturn, Pluto. Remember in 2019, Jupiter comes into Capricorn. Uh, the South Node's coming into Capricorn. Mars is retrograding in Capricorn this year. Capricorn is where all the action is happening. And Capricorn is not a place that gives charity or, or happiness to those that are at the bottom. I, I just hate to be honest with you. It really is where, like, you've got to step it up. If you're expecting the government to help you out and fix things for you or things like that, this is not going to be the time. It really, and I'm just going to, I'm going to just ripple some feathers here. It really is not because of Donald Trump. It is not because of Democrat or Republican. It is not because of a senator. It is not because of any person. It is literally because of what the universe is asking you to grow up with. And it isn't because of any political aspect. That is the whole problem, is people believe that the politics are the cause to where things are happening in life. But if you were going to step back for a sec and just take a look at all the planets and see that they're all fucking happening in Capricorn and they're massively happening in such an intense way and there's massive eclipses happening here coming into 2019, Saturn and Pluto which meet up here and they haven't met up since the 1500s in Capricorn, 1517. You wanna talk about some serious shit and really all about, look up what Capricorn means, it's Kronos, it's, Unfortunately, also referred to as the devil in many ways, too, and on very ancient texts in astrology. Um, not saying that you have to go join the devil or anything. I think that it's about massive integrity towards learning that, you know what, you've got to bite the bullet and do the hard work and deal with the devil on your back, but that doesn't mean that you can't be in the, supre the supreme light of God all the time and, and the positivity, but, you know, it's definitely not going to be, you know, Rainbow Road 
this year to get there. Like, this is definitely a year that tests you to learn how to return home inside of yourself, find that home inside of yourself, and to be honest with you, learn to realize, and I hate to use the old term of hierarchies, but there are hierarchies on this planet with humans now. And you can go from a car to the top. I know that might sound crazy. And when I, when people are like, what does that mean? You can go from living in a car, or you know what, here in Orange County, we have a homeless problem where there's over a thousand people who live on the, dr the drive or riverbed in tents. It's like tent city, and they're trying to kick them out. You can literally go from homeless in Capricorn to the highest office in the world. We also, you know, I'm trying to tell you that there is no excuse. It is your own self-worth and issues that, especially with Uranus coming into Taurus, I mean, Uranus is an awakener. It's an awakener. It literally throws you on your ash or picks you up and takes you to heaven. And it's in the sign of Taurus, the sign that is about your worth, your tools. You have the tools this year to make your life great. They're surrounded by you. The end of 2017 literally littered you with karma everywhere. It was like God literally peed karma on the whole entire planet with everything you need, literally. And then he took a big old shit to get, have enough to last for a long time. I'm not joking. And I am blown away reading the messages from people on the internet still coming into 2018 here, still for some reason thinking that Oh my God, it's because of this person. It's because of that. That's totally South Node in Aquarius. Getting lost into other people are the cause of my demise. If you get stuck on that or start tattooing that shit onto yourself, I guarantee you, you will not be happy. Now let's get into some of the fun stuff here. A lot of stuff when it comes to what are some of my predictions? So like at the end of 2017, or 2017's horoscope, I predicted that the greatest mergers would happen, which I actually did at the end of the year. 2018 is definitely a monetary year. I know all the astrologers are talking about it. Uranus is entering Taurus, which is the sign of money. It's the sign of value systems. Now it does come back into Aries in the middle, or the, at the end of summer, okay? So it's not like it's, uh, gonna be there all year. So from May until I think Uranus retros uh, back into Taurus, I mean back into Aries, you know, in the, in the late, in the fall. So it's May through the f end of fall. So it's like, I don't know, five months, four months out of the year, we're gonna get this Uranus Taurus thing, five months. So it's like monetary systems, currencies. I mean, yes, there's gonna be a major change, but if you think that it's Bitcoin like exactly, I believe cryptocurrency is a big part of it, but I believe cryptocurrency led the way for something different. It's just like MySpace, right? MySpace started social media and at the end of the day, look at, I'm doing a live stream on Facebook right now, we're not even using MySpace anymore and it died. The same goes with what's coming up here with currencies. I think cryptocurrency is a, a way that's going to start to see more, but I think there is going to be something dealing with money and a new monetary system that's even more different, and I think a commodity that we didn't even see coming that's going to be worth more. So the last time Uranus was in Taurus was when, we, we, when it was during World War II and when America and Britain and Germany started producing the most tanks, the most uh, submarines, the most aircraft for the war. And that became the new commodity, war, right? It was like literally like, like the, the, the commodity became rations like cigarettes and um, you know, food and especially for Hitler's trips, they could have used some warm jackets and some food when they sat there in Russia. So it's like, it's interesting that commodities are going to change in 2018. Things of value are gonna be different and because we're in a digital age, a lot of people keep thinking about it as money. I think because we're in a Saturn and Capricorn, I think corporations are going to become monetary systems of themselves. 
businesses are going to create their own style of cash flows and their own style of things and their own commodities, right? It's a lot like how we're going to see, I think the internet's going to become a commodity and your space on the internet and what you do on the internet. I think that we're going to start to see things and, and you know, one thing with Uranus, there is not one person on the planet that knows exactly what it will be. Like, Uranus is literally the ruler of the heavens. So only God knows how the monetary system is going to change and what the new commodity is going to be. It literally could be dog shit that's going to be the most valuable thing. Literally, it could be. Could be plastic boxes that become the next new thing. But whatever that it is, be prepared. And the best way to be prepared is Capricorn. Meaning, have a business or be part of a business that you know can move on through it all and adapt to whatever the changes in monetary is and offering a service or offering some sort of commodity that helps people. Uranus is about helping people. So the whole thing about Bitcoin that really gets me off is, yeah, sure, yeah, it can help people, but I think that you're going to notice that especially things that deal with helping people in the greatest way, things that deal with the internet. Remember Uranus, Taurus, internet. So I think that's why everybody's so focused on crypto. But it's like, I think that it's wider than that. And especially because we're in the biggest Capricorn transit in our life. The last time we had Saturn and Pluto conjunct um, literally in Capricorn was literally during um, Leonardo da Vinci and, and all of his artwork. And so some of the greatest commodities that ever came out was art back then. Now, there was no internet, but it's interesting to see that I think that different forms of art, especially Taurus, Taurus rules so many different values and skill sets. I think that you're going to be blown away to realize that there's going to be some sort of new art form or commodity form that is going to be so valuable that everybody wants a piece of, but not everybody can get. And I think that it's going to be something that deals with helping people, thinking about showing the way. And so, I think that 2018 is going to be the year of you seeing that money and commodities is changing. And I think it's going to be the year that you're going to notice it's connected to corporations. It's connected to businesses. And I think you'll be blown away to see a business come up with its own money system, kind of like a token system for itself. So like best description is like when you go to like uh, like a, like like a game place, right? Like a, like Dave and Buster's and you get a Dave and Buster's card, right? You pay them and you get the card to use their shit. I literally believe there's, and I don't even know because it's so, it, your honest is going to bring us, we're, we're going to start to see people creating their own money and like how high the commodity of that money is going to be is how good the product is and how bad everybody wants the product, you know? And it will be like, oh my gosh, like I wish I had, 20 Dave and Buster's dollars on me. Like they are not selling them anymore. I can't even get access to it. Places that you can't get access to are going to become, especially because Saturn requires so many badges and so many achievements and so many things to get where you need to go. And because we've never in our lives seen this much Capricorn coming in over the next couple of years, I don't think that 2018 will be the year that will exactly be the definition of money. I think it will be the talk about it. I think it will be the intro to start to seeing it. I think 2019 and 2020 are definitely those years that start to see the change in monetary systems completely and then that lead into the 2020s. But just keep your ears, eyes open for that stuff. I think that relationships for all of us, and I'm speaking for every person on camera and in this room right now is going to go through one of the biggest changes of their lives this year. We have been waiting for the last planet to retrograde besides Mercury, because that really doesn't count because that happens a lot, but we have been waiting for the last major big planet to retrograde in Libra for a long time and also some of the last major planets to retrograde in Scorpio. Both Libra and Scorpio deal with sex and relationships in the biggest way, okay? It's interesting that this year we're finishing the retrogrades in Scorpio because after Jupiter comes out of Scorpio, all we'll have is Venus that will be 18 months from here. But literally, it's Venus retrograding in Libra this year that's going to happen. When it comes to relationships, 
Everybody is still in a weird unsurety about all relationships in their life, whether they're romantic or business or whatever. There's still always that little weird question of like, am I really all the way there? Is there something else there? And when it comes to twin flames or when it comes to anything that's dealing with um, a lot of these more karmic, deeply relationship aspects, there's so many questions that are unanswered. This will be the year that will answer a lot of those questions, not, if not all. One, North Node's finishing in Leo. Two, major eclipses in Leo. Three, lunar eclipses in Leo. Four, Venus retrograde in Libra, finishing the retrogrades in Libra that we have been needing. Because if you look back since 2012, well, you can go back to 2010, 20, 2009 actually is when Saturn retrograded in uh, Libra. Since 2009 all the way to now, we have been dealing with massive planets, especially the, the planets that are negative, right? Like the ones that definitely are harsher, Mars and Saturn, retrograding through Libra and through Scorpio. These are the areas that have to deal with sex, relationships, and connections. So I don't think it's any irony to see that in 2018 we're finally ending the hardest transits to these energy sources. And I think especially with Jupiter coming into Sagittarius at the end of the year, the North Node leaving Leo and everything changing, just how we saw the karma and fate that stepped in at the end of 2017 with projects and fate and where we were going, you're going to see the same energy with relationships and setting the mark. Whether that's having a child, that might change your life forever. A divorce that you've been waiting to have forever. Or a new love come into your life as a single person that you've never been able to have or been waiting for. Or that person that you never really liked that finally you figure out what it is. This is literally, or that business relationship that finally is going to take off. Or that this is going to be the year in which these major relationship stuff is going to be the center focus. And especially in the fall of 2018, where it's going to come up the most. All in all, there's a couple other big things to talk about. Jupiter's trining Neptune for most of this year. So when it comes to your dreams, your imagination, I got to say, and more importantly, your spiritual duty, this is a time where you can mix spiritual duty and mix your pleasure at the same time and rock it harder than ever. So don't, uh, don't waste it. Don't waste it. I would not waste it. I would not waste any of this energy this year on things that you don't believe in, on things that uh, are not part of your passion. If you're still working at that job that you don't like and you're still trying to tell yourself it's impossible to do what you love, it's impossible to do the things that you want, I'm telling you, you the universe is more primed and the way that the money system is, is the, I think it's about individuality with money now. What do you offer to the world? And I think that individuals and corporations are going to have to, are, you're going to see mixing a lot. And maybe, you know, it, it really is going to be kind of that way. I, I know people think I'm, probably I'm crazy right now, but literally that's going to be a big part of it. One of the last things that I want to bring about this year is this. With Saturn and Capricorn and Neptune in Pisces, sure, work your ass off, work hard, get a schedule going. Put that work in every day. It's going to do wonders for you in your life. But the one thing that I got to say is Neptune is in sextile, which means you're going to need your time when you know you're going to have to give it to God. You're going to have to take a break. You're going to, you know, there's, it's okay to take breaks. It's okay to take little moments where you go, you know what? I've reached my max. I've worked my butt off. Let's throw it to God and see what happens. There's going to be parts where you're going to need to learn to chill out. There's going to be parts where you're going to need your escape from it. The universe isn't saying that you're stuck in a concentration camp or you're stuck in a slave's labor camp and you can't have a little bit of a break. It's okay to take that break and not feel guilty about it. The one thing that you're going to notice about this year is you're going to feel guilty when you take a break from working or doing the things that you're on in your life, which I think is so funny on how this is set up, is learning to not be guilty and know that you, you're, 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 you're stepping into moments where you're 
envisioning more. You're envisioning your imagination. You're letting God come into your life more. And this is a year where literally if your business platform, your whole entire life's purpose is connected to a higher purpose, connected to a purpose that feels connected to your soul, that feels more connected to God and the universe, I guarantee you, you will not fail. But you are going to have to have the biggest blind faith ever. So in 2018, blind faith, courage, when you mix those two together, oh my gosh, most people don't do that. Most people don't have, people think in this world balls is because I got an AR-15 or because I've got that big truck out back or because I know how to kick somebody's head in with my foot or even if they're a lady, you know, it's like, oh, of how I look or whatever. No. The deepest form of balls or ovaries is literally blind faith in your courage towards a higher path for your soul's purpose that is connected with the divine. That is the highest and the most intense that it could be. It's definitely going to be a very powerful 2018. I think that if I were to break it off into sections, and actually let's go, uh, let's switch here. Let me, I'll, I'll, I'll mirror this real quick. Hold on one sec. Um, I want to draw everybody out here what I feel energy-wise the year is going to look like real quick. So are we good on the, uh, the can they see this? All right, cool. Um, so 2018. So everybody, this is what I see, okay? So let's say this is January, this is December, okay? We are on a very extreme rise from January to April, okay? And it's going to continue to go. Remember, all the planets are direct for a while, okay, at the beginning of the year. We haven't seen this for a long time. And all the planets start retrograding, okay? Uh, March 8th, Jupiter retrogrades, okay? That means that you've expanded as much as you can, and now it's time to reap the rewards. April 17th is one of the biggest days of the year, just for the fact that Saturn retrogrades, and Chiron comes. So Saturn, retro, and Chiron, Aries, okay? So from April, to June is a little bit of a flat line, okay? The reason why is not that there's not much going on. I know Uranus is moving into Taurus, okay? But I think there's going to be a, a moment in between there that might be a spike, but it will mainly be flat. When Uranus entered into Aries in 2011, we had the earthquake in Japan on the exact day that Uranus entered into Aries. So anything can happen on May 15th, but I think it's still going to be a flat line zone. Because in June through September, I think is going to be the most wonkiest time ever. We're going to have the Mars retrograde. We're going to have uh, Uranus retrograde. Mars will be retrograde. There's going to be a lot of planets that will be retrograde. So it's going to be pretty intense to see that. But I think that at the end of the day that you're going to notice that the wonkiness and the weirdness, if you had to plan anything, I would not plan anything as far as like your biggest thing in your life for June through September. Now, some of the things could happen, but there's so many retrogrades and the energy is literally all over the place and confusing and I don't want to say dangerous, but yeah, there's a little bit of weird danger in that time. Um, so I would just definitely just be careful, okay? And then I think se September through December is definitely a time where things kind of have hit kind of a rock bottom and they're slowly coming up and I think November through December is the big rise again. So I think the lowest point is going to be September through, uh, let's say October um, in the fall there. I, I definitely think it's going to be a little bit of a low point. Uranus is coming back into Aries. Uh, there's going to be some weird aspects happening. Venus is retrograding. Mars is finally turning direct and has to go through. So it's, it's definitely um, I would say this January through April, do not waste the time. Do not waste 
Use it up, make it happen. Don't look back, look forward. Because the rest of the year, I think April through June is gonna be a big time to capitalize, okay, on those things. And then I think June through September, it's running with what you got. And September to October, rethinking things. And December, November, being prepared for what ticket did you get? <laughs> so it's going to be kind of interesting here. Now, we are about to uh, go here. But before then, I want to take some uh, last questions here on my iPhone here as I'm standing up and see what uh, people are saying. So let me, let me load this up real quick here. Um, OK, let's see. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can put them down right now. <clears throat> I'm going to have a little a bit of my famous Sprite. Oh, yeah. So anyway, somebody brought up the health thing. So interesting with all this stuff going on in Capricorn, right? Uh, and how people have been really sick and there's been a lot of sick en energy going on. You know, I, I know it's been hard and I know there's been a lot of people sick. I mean, I literally just got over a flu. I'm on exactly two weeks today and I don't have any more phlegm, but like, I'm, I mean, I still kind of in the morning kind of, <coughs> you know, there's some, still some stuff there. So two weeks, it's definitely not easy. And I think that this is just Capricorn. You know, some of the biggest plagues happened with uh, Saturn and Capricorn. Look it up. Um, it, it's, it still feels like retrograde in Mercury. What's up with that? I think it's just the adjustment and Mercury was just in detriment and today it's on Saturn. Mercury's going to be happier. Mercury's been very unhappy for about three months and Mercury becomes happy in about a month. So that will, that will help. Um, I've heard not to buy property after June 18th through October. Is that true? Interesting that you say that. I, I, I put actually into the, uh, that timeline that I wouldn't plan for anything big or do anything big from June to October of, 20, of 2018. That's just the most wonkiest time. Things are all over the place. Uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I would, I mean, personally, I wouldn't buy a house and Venus is getting ready to go through its retrograde and coming into shadow and the sun and, uh, the, the, and Venus are going to go through their big shift as far as, you know, the evening star, morning star, the evening star. So there's going to be some some big changes that are coming uh, at that time. When do, when do you think is a safe area of the world to be in this next year? The whole world's the world. I don't know if a place is safer than anywhere you know, else. I mean, um, it all depends on what you call safe, too, right? Um, I'm not going to talk about individual sun signs. You can buy my uh, Saturn and Capricorn video that's out right now. Um, it's at inclusiveastrology.com. For your sun sign, I talk about what this next couple years will be like a little five minute video for each sun sign. They're cheap, they're about five bucks a piece. Um, am I still hiring? We're looking for interns for people in the Orange County area. Um, we're not hiring at the moment. Um, Like impending disasters, where do you think the best place to live would be? I haven't looked at that, so I can't answer that for you. That's like an hour horoscope in itself to do it correctly and look at the whole world and look at all the transits and look at the charts. I can't give you that answer. Um, but I'll, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I think a big earthquake's finally coming um, for California. I have actually intuitively think it's coming in the northern part. I actually think it's hitting like San Francisco or somewhere like that. But that's just from intuition and knowing that the last time the LA earthquake hit, we had five to six planets in Capricorn and a lot of Earth energy. And we're actually stepping into a lot of Earth energy right now. So um, I've, I've said that. I've put that out there. I'm going to uh, be putting that. Um, um, changes still seem slow to go. Well, remember, we're in Capricorn. so. Things are going to take a little bit of time. They're not going to be rocket ships. Yeah, Jupiter and Mars are there. We're having a transformation right now. We're all going through a metamorphosis right now. So you're in the middle of crazy change. Usually change is fast when we're on the other side of it, 
And we actually see that it happened. We're in the middle of it right now. And I agree, the flu is uh, light codes for upgrades. Um, somebody said, you are full of positive action. Thank you. What are some baby steps for those of us who are very, uh, I don't know what that is, stymed and scared to take any action? You have to believe in yourself. You have to love yourself. You literally have to love yourself. You have to be willing to step up and be like, I love myself. I know it's not easy to do. It starts with like looking in the mirror. It starts with like wanting to go out and have people like see you walk around. I know it's a very Leo thing, but we're all learning Leo right now. It takes wearing a jacket you think's gonna look cool or putting together an outfit you like or starting in little things like making a little area in your house that makes you feel happy or going out and buying a thing, that, a food that makes you happy or doing something to your car that makes you happy or doing some, I mean, it's just about learning to do little things that make you happy and just keep following those and following those and making it your number one thing. I think that makes it extremely good. Uh, good time to get married in 2018. I would definitely wait till the end of the year for that one. Um, like literally, literally the end of the year and into, you know, it's going to be kind of a, a crazy time. Uh, getting married definitely, kind of, you know, I, 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 like I said, I think it's the craziest year uh, for relationships and there's some of the craziest relationship transits we've gone through in a long time, which will be coming up here. Uh, at the end of the year in the fall, and with everything happening in Leo and Aquarius, definitely a lot of weird relationships in and out, switching and stuff like that till the end of the year. Um, I do gotta go here in a second, guys, because I do have people here helping me and I want to get them home to dinner. Um, yes, I'm putting up a new website, theleoking.com is changing. Uh, in the next week, which will have my new way to book a reading with me. I'm only doing in-person readings. Um, I'm not going to be doing Skype or phone readings right now at the moment. Um, and I haven't thought of my rate yet. Anyway, looks like we got so many questions and I'm running out of time. So I just want to say this as my kind of like end of the year um, last word. I know it might sound crazy when I say the Titanic's going to sink in 2019. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy. And a lot of people are going to be telling you in the financial world to jump on to cryptocurrency right away. Everything. Put it all on there, which, you know, might work out for you. My personal way that I'm going to run through this year is when you see this much Capricorn, the ship ain't sunk yet. And one thing that I know about Capricorns, and which you'll know any Capricorn, they won't die until they choose to die, literally. They will hold on for dear life till the end. And you know, it sucks. Some people don't like capitalism. Some people don't like the way that things are right now. And you know what? The 2020s are going to be the decade in which we are going to see the changes like our forefathers saw when they fought against the British and changed to a whole entire new world. Those years are coming. I hate to be the first one to tell you it's not this year. So it's about learning to make the best with what you've got now. And yes, it's not easy. I, could, I, I would have never believed six years ago, literally six years ago, that I would be standing up here on my own stage in my own studio talking to you on a camera like this, live streaming. I would have never believed it. I was living in my car. I was literally peeing out the side of the car. And I had a dream to try and make some videos on a freaking laptop. That was not a good laptop, by the way. So I think that you know, it's, it's, it, it is about that sheer will, that sheer drive of whether you want it or not and continuing through. I'm coming up on 5,000 videos, not only through YouTube but through my app. And you know, it's after 5,000 videos that you kind of realize like it was work, it was everyday commitment. And I think that the time that we're in now with so much grounding and manifesting, you can make some of the best things that you've ever wanted to have happen. I will also say this, this is a time where you don't want to get too distracted. It's okay to have moments of distraction, take little breaks, but with so much energy hitting Neptune and positivity this year, and with the negative aspects we had to Neptune, there's been a lot when it comes to drug use or alcohol use or things that deal with escaping this planet, that you want to watch yourself and be in control this year. You don't want to take it too far over the edge. Um, anything is possible though. 
even in a capitalistic slash Capricorn utopia society, even though it might not be utopian to you, uh, some people out there, it is still possible. You just have to learn the rules. I've used the analogy like chess just recently. This is about how to play the game right or Monopoly. It sucks. If you don't get Boardwalk and Park Place, you're going to have to pay a pet hefty premium and pass by there. And we live in a world now where Boardwalk and Park Place is on every corner. But there is ways to play the game to where you still can win without those. And there are ways to win by getting those and finding out. Remember, you can always buy Park Place and Boardwalk from anybody. And we're in a world right now and in mergers like we saw at the end of the year where when a company sees a company that's in competition with them, they usually just buy them out. Kind of a crazy way to think about life, but don't worry. The 2020s are the revolution that you've all been waiting for. It's just going to take some time. And it's going to take some time to learn how to play the game. And if you're not good at playing the game, maybe get a mentor, a friend that does, and learn from them. And if you're really good at playing the game, play the game your best right now and ride the ship until the very end and have the best lifeboat to get off to the new world when you're ready. Thanks so much for joining me here on my live Facebook. Truly appreciate all your support. Thank you for helping me get through this transition. I got a lot of new content, three networks that we're launching uh, literally in the next week or two. So um, I'm very excited for that. Remember that the Leo King app, every day you can watch your daily videos and watch my horoscopes every day on video. Go to the leokingapp.com or go to the Apple or Android store and download the Leo King app and start your seven day free trial today. That app in the next week or two is changing to future life. 13 new awesome personalities in five different sectors from love, relationships, all the way to health, wellness, and of course tarot cards and astrology. All going to be daily videos, weekly videos, vlogs straight to you and notifications to your phone every day. Also, it's going to be on futurelife.tv, a new website. So if you don't have an app or you don't want to use an app or you want to use the mobile part, if you don't have an iPhone, you can do it through there as well. Thanks so much for all your support. I truly appreciate it. You'll see all the new stuff coming out, and I will see you all in 2018, continuing the journey. Thanks so much. Love you all.